Okay, well, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining us for this masterclass on uh, poetry. Uh, I, I know we, we sort of uh, themed it as how to read creatively, uh, but I'm, I'm sure everyone who is, is a fan of literature, poetry, um, you know, will we'll have a good takeaway from, from today's masterclass. I would request all of you to please switch on your cameras for some time so that our professors uh, you know, and mentors can, can see you, um, can have some healthy conversation, banter going on with you, and you can uh, switch off your cameras once, um, you know, the masterclass begins and sort of sit back and relax. So I'll wait for, you know, a few seconds before you guys do that. And um, welcome once again for this masterclass today. It's good to see some familiar names. Hi, Anushka, um, Aprajita, Ritika, Ria. Hi, Ojasvi. Good, we've got our first person who's turned on the camera. Uh, I'll wait for some more. <laughs> Hi, Ashwarya. Awesome, good to see some smiling faces. While everyone else is turning on their cameras, let me first ask our first uh, lone warrior. Let's go to Ojasvi. Um, Please, you can just introduce yourself, which grade you're in, which school, which city, and also just to tell us what are you, why are you here for this webinar today, for this masterclass, and what are you planning to learn from today's session? Um, hello, everyone. So this is my first session in the Big Red group, and I'm in 10th grade, and I love poetry, and I've been writing and reading a lot since 2020, and... I just want to learn new things. I just want to read everyone's write-ups and get to know more. I'm just so excited. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with Just Me. And hopefully uh, we'll have some good, good, uh, have a lot of fun in today's masterclass. Um, thank you for introducing me. I've just yourself. noticed the sun has moved. And is <laughs> <laughs> I'm so going to move myself. Sorry, I had no intention of doing this. No problem, no problem. We'll move on to, let's see, um, Eshwarya, why don't you go ahead, tell us a bit more about yourself and what are you looking forward as a takeaway from today's masterclass? Hello everyone, um, so this is my first session with the Big Red group as well and I was introduced to this in my school. I'm from Shivnaga School, Noida and I'm eagerly looking forward to learning from you all as I'm a passionate writer i love reading writing i have my own blog too and i'm hoping to gain a few good tips from today's session thank you for holding this our pleasure our pleasure i know i'm sure there are so many bloggers and writers out there hopefully uh you learn a lot uh from from today's session and uh, keep the interaction going on guys i would still request all of you who have not switched on their cameras we just asked you to do that for five minutes and uh, so that again later on when you know you you sort of get in touch with these mentors they know who you are um and they're able to respond accordingly so we'll take a couple more uh, people um what about navya why don't you go ahead and, and tell us what are you looking forward for today's session and where are you from okay uh, hi i'm navya i am from the air force school i'm in 10th grade i also have my own blog and i am really excited to learn and just i really I'm, I'm looking forward to improving myself. Thank you. Thank you. Aprajita, over to you. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Aprajita. I am from Shivnadar School. And um, well, actually, I really like reading books. Poetry, I mean, it's not my strong point to be honest. It's like, I'm really bad at poetry, but it's something I enjoy because people are able to express themselves quite freely. So I'm hoping to, you know, uh, improve my poetry skills through this. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and I know poetry is not everyone's strong suit, but hopefully today, as I said, it's not just about poetry. It's about literature. It's about uh, expression um, and everything that goes along with it. So hopefully even if, 
for a lot of you who are not really interested in writing, um, I, I think there's a lot of takeaways that we'll get out of today's session. Um, we'll move forward with a couple of more comments. And again, guys, please do switch on your cameras. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, but again, uh, there's only so much that I can do. So let's move on to maybe Navya. Or sorry, Navya went, uh, Navya went already, right? Let's go to Swarnika. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Swarnika. I am from the Air Force School. I am in 12th grade. Uh, this is my first session with the Big Red Group. Uh, our teacher sent us the registration link for this. I am an avid reader. I am into reading and writing. I write poetry. I don't know if I can say I'm good at it or not, but I do love writing. I recently started posting on Instagram and yeah, I'm really excited to learn whatever I can from this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sarnika. I know a lot of uh, people from the Air Force School is, uh, are here. Uh, good to see a guy as well. A, a lot of girls attending today's webinar. Uh, so before we move on to anyone else, I think um, I'll go on to Rohit. Rohit, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and what are you planning to learn today? Uh, hi, I'm Rohit. Um, I study in um, Dubai British School. And I also kind of like writing and reading, but not much reading, but I do like writing a lot, especially for like English language and literature I'm here, here and there. But yeah, I wanted to attend this to see how to improve my literature. Awesome. Awesome. And are you joining us from, are you in Dubai right now, Rohit? Yeah, I am in Dubai, yeah. Awesome. Thank you for joining us in, in the late hours, sort of, I think it'll be around 8, 8.30 um, right now. Um, oh, I forgot. Okay, I was going to say, I was going to come to you, uh, Krisha, with your beautiful uh, pink uh, headband. Krisha, we'll, we'll take last comment from you, and then we'll, of course, uh, give it over to Ross and Lisa uh, to, to direct the session today. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, and we'll start the session after the last comment. Yeah, so hi, I'm Krisha. I'm currently entering the ninth grade soon, and I'm um, in Hillspring International School in Mumbai. So I love reading and writing, and I've written a lot of poems since I was like about seven, eight years old. So it's been a lot, couple of years now. And I attended this meeting in the school because I'm trying to like, I'm interested to see what I could learn new and how I could improve myself in like understanding poetry and writing. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Guys, uh, I'm going to uh, just tell everyone, please uh, feel free if you, there is something that you do want to share with both of our mentors here, uh, Ross and Lisa, feel free to unmute yourself uh, so we can take maybe one or two more comments and then uh, we'll start with today's masterclass. Um, I do see a hand here, Ria, go ahead. Yeah, greetings everyone. First of all, I'm very camera shy and my camera is also in a very bad condition. I tried, but uh, I have a great passion for writing poetry and I'm an avid reader as well. But, you know, one of them, uh, like, I'm looking forward to know more about poetry because I, I just don't know what, what a good poetry looks like. So I just don't know in what direction should I go and especially while editing them. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, uh, Ria. I think a lot of us are uh, hoping for a lot of tips as per se, but there are no tips. I guess it's a process uh, to write poetry. But any final comments, guys? You can raise your hand, unmute yourself and, and speak up. Okay. Well, on that note, um, I'll, I'll give it over to our, our beautiful mentors, uh, Professor Lisa New and Ross Wiseman. Um, please, uh, you know, feel free to introduce yourself and I'm looking forward for a great masterclass today. Over to you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I just want to say how excited I am that my people are here, <laughs> the readers and writers of the world. And, you know, sometimes when we talk about poetry, um, those who aren't converts to passionate reading and writing will say, oh, poetry, you know, who's going to care about that? And I remember first talking to Rishi and saying, oh, those kids, they're out there. Um, the kids who 
who love the arts, who can't put the books down and, um, and who have this passion uh, for the emotional and intellectual satisfactions of, of reading. And so I'm, I'm thrilled you're here. Um, and I'd like to uh, introduce first my colleague Ross, who will be leading most sessions um, of, this, of this summer program. And I'm gonna let Ross say a little bit about himself and then we'll come back to me and I'll tell you a little bit about Poetry in America, uh, which this program is part of. Hello everybody. Good to see you in our virtual world. Uh, it was also a treat for me to hear uh, everyone's interest in today. And I know some, some folks are already writers. Some of them are, some of you are aspiring writers. Some of you are readers. Some of you aren't readers. Um, and I, I think I grew up as someone who loved writing. I, I felt less positive about reading, but having the love of uh, writing has been something a part of my life since I was a little kid, since I was seven. I got into poetry when I was also in high school and I studied poetry in college and also after. And uh, yeah, I'm delighted to be here with you. I'm going to be a, an instructor for Poetry in America for a couple of years now. And I'm going to be teaching uh, this coming summer in our Poetry in America intensive. So uh, I hope to see some of you then and there. And that's it for me for now. I'm going to hand it back to Lisa. OK, so I just want to tell you a little bit about Poetry in America, um, which I began to build uh, while at Harvard University um, almost almost 10 years ago when I started making online courses. It first just began as online courses. And but before too long, I realized that the new tools at our disposal of video and um, uh, and of, of video and of obviously the technology we're all using now might enable me to reach and even teach much, much broader uh, audiences. And so before too long, uh, I had developed first a set of online courses that um, some of which we'll be excerpting for this summer intensive, but also a television program uh, that is now in its third season. Uh, I'm now making its fourth season, a television program comprised of half hour um, encounters with great American poems and the television and the, the television series was organized in order to give everyone, whether you love reading and love poetry or are afraid of it, um, to give everyone an experience of sort of the pleasure and the joy of encountering um, language that's been very, very carefully wrought for a, for a purpose. And so I thought a good introduction to the intensive and the work you'll do this summer would be just first to share with you a clip from actually the very first um, episode of television that I created. Uh, it aired first back in 2018. And this, um, this excerpt is one that you will be encountering in the summer intensive. I think it gives some of the flavor. Take it away, Ross. Wonderful. <clears throat> um, and just to say a word about it before I press play, we're going to take you into the middle of this episode and really this conversation about poetry. And one of the great pleasures of, well, I'll let you decide, but I think one of the great pleasures from where I sit is hearing many remarkable people, uh, young people, scholars, politicians, musicians, all talk about poetry. So we're gonna show a very short clip um, with Bill Clinton, the former president of the United States, Herbie Hancock. We, we won't hear him, his reflection, but we'll hear some of his music. 
and then Sonia Sanchez, a, a poet and professor, all reflecting a little bit of poetry. So I'm going to play that now for us. Yeah, because it still ain't right. What I felt from my reading of it loses the spirit of a poem. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? Langston Hughes was heavily influenced by music. So there's a rhythm, there's a musical rhythm to this poetry. It's a lot like jazz. It's clearly one melody, yes. but there's some ad-libbing, some improvisation as you go along. Some of the lines rhyme. It's a different rhyming scheme, but it's enough to remind you that it's a poem just like it'd be enough to remind you that it was a jazz song. This whole piece that when you do it, you hear the jazz and blues, you know? So you have to then take your mouth and make your tongue begin and respond. What happens to a dream deferred? Do that, do that, do that, do that, do that, do do that, do do that, 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 do it just sags like a heavy load, low, 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 or does it explode? <laughs> he gives you. Well, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, thank, thank you, Ross. And I, I'll just say one, one word about that excerpt. I think one of the things it dramatizes is how. Poetry comes from everywhere <laughs> and uh, speaks to every kind of experience. This particular poem is written by the uh, poet, great Harlem Renaissance poet, Langston Hughes, who was, as you could tell from this excerpt, very much influenced by jazz. And so we had three interpreters, all of whom I, I interviewed at different moments, exploring how poetry, which is the music of human language, how poetry uh, draws on jazz, speaks to jazz. And that's the kind of uh, connection that we will be exploring among many others. Back to you, Ross. The music of poetry. Um, I, I wanted to just take this um, minute, just to have a brief introduction to uh, the summer intensive that we're going to be running. Um, for a lot of the same reasons that I heard a lot of you are here today, we're going to be we're going to be teaching again this summer uh, in a one week uh, one week class in July. And for those that are interested in deepening the relationship to college level literature, to finding these type of links between music, real, real art and sound, and also the words on the page. Uh, this is a chance to do that. Um, Lisa was just talking about the Harlem Renaissance and Langston News to be able to then step into other places and other times and think about history through literature. Um, you can do that with us. And then we're also gonna be practicing writing and writing of different kinds. So people that like to write critically, who wanna write a, a good argumentative essay, we're gonna be doing some of that. Um, but also we're going to be writing creatively for those that want to work on their craft of poetry, who want to figure out how to feel more comfortable with their pen in hand or their fingers on the keyboard, however folks are doing it these days. Maybe there's a little bit of uh, audio recording you can do into your phone and then that can generate a poem that way too. Uh, and there's, a, there's an artistic process of creating poetry that we're going to do, but then also through that we're going to be 
expressing ourselves, which is one of the one of the great vehicles um, that poetry poetry can serve as a great vehicle for that. Um, and of course, um, I highlighted right here. We're going to be talking also about the joy. For us, for for I think for anybody who teaches poetry, and we hope for anybody who studies poetry, there's a great joy in this work. So we hope that we can also spread some of that that pleasure uh, to everyone. Yes, I'm I'm, I'm just going to add to the joy uh, <laughs> for a second, and and in a moment we're going to begin to read a poem together. Um, and the, the joy I feel when I read a poem and that um, I think you, many of you already feel and will feel if you, if you experience this intensive, it's a, it's a complex joy. It's sometimes the joy of seeing feelings that you've had um, on the page in someone else's language and making that connection. Sometimes it's the joy of understanding, putting the pieces together of a complex world that's different from your own and having realizations slowly dawn <laughs> in your mind and also in your heart. This ex experience in, of this art form um, connects mind and heart and is enlarging. Um, kind of in the moment and over time. There are poems we, uh, we will share with you this summer that we think will, you'll take with you and lines of them will stick in your heads and become part, um, part of how you think and, and maybe even part of who you are. Um, and so Ross is gonna tell us about our real goals for the work we, we wanna do with you this hour, which is to take you right into the reading of a poem. Thanks, Lisa. I, I really love how you talked about that. It, it, the way you describe poetry to me sounds like a reflective window, one that you can look into the window and see yourself, but then one that also is a veil for your own eyes as you look out into the world and see what else is out there. Yeah. Um, so what are we doing today? So these are our goals for the summer. What are we doing today? Um, we're gonna read a poem. Uh, Lisa and I selected a poem by Nikki Giovanni called Mothers. And we're gonna spend time looking at that together. Um, and we're gonna discuss it. We're gonna, we're gonna ex explore it, we're gonna reflect on it. And then what do good students of poetry do? We're gonna read, so we're gonna read it again. And we're gonna think about it a little more. We're gonna turn it around and look at it again through our window. We're gonna, we're gonna leave some time at the end for Q&A, for anything that we didn't get to that you're interested in. You can either put it in the chat or you can unmute and ask, we'd love to hear you. Um, and then I'll, I'll do a very uh, quick uh, recap of what we're gonna be doing in the summertime uh, for anybody that wants to keep learning with us um, after. So I think that's, that's, the, uh, that's the outline for today. I'm gonna pull up our poem and we would love if there's anybody in the group who would uh, feel excited enough and brave enough to, to read uh, the poem out loud for us. We'd love to hear you and, and follow along. This is the poem, Mothers, Nikki Giovanni. I see, I see a hand. Yeah, I see Ria. Uh, why don't you go ahead? Your hand, you were the first one to raise your hand, so fast his finger first. Thank you. And I would request um, if you could turn on your video as well, and um, if that's okay. And so that I can put a spotlight on you as well. It'll be great. Yes, sure. Just a moment. Um, am I visible? Awesome. Um, yes, go ahead. Mothers by Nikki Giovanni. The last time I was home to see my mother. I'm sorry, the screen is really bloody. Okay, sorry. <laughs> the last time I was home to see my mother, we guessed exchanged pleasantries and unpleasantries pulled a warm, comforting silence around us and read separate books. I remember the first time I consciously saw her. We were living in a three-room apartment on Burns Avenue. Mommy always sat in the dark. I don't know how I knew that, but she did. That night, I stumbled into the kitchen 
maybe because I've always been a night person or maybe, or perhaps because I had wet the bed. She was sitting on a chair. The room was bathed in moonlight, diffused through the, those thousands of pains landlords who rented to people with children were prone to put in. Windows she may have, sorry, the screen keeps glitching. <laughs> um, right. Windows she may have been smoking, but maybe not. Her hair was three quarters her height, which made me believe, which made me a strong believer in the Samson myth and very black. I'm sure I just hung there by the door. I remember thinking, what a beautiful lady. She was very deliberately waiting, perhaps for my father to come home from his night job or maybe for a dream that had promised to come by. Come here, she said. I'll teach you a poem. I see the moon. The moon sees me. God bless the moon and God bless me. I taught it to my son who recited it to her just to say we must learn to bear the pleasures as we have borne the pains. Beautiful. Lovely. Thank you for reading that. You read that really nicely. Um, it's, a, it's a dense poem. It's a dense poem. And it's a rich poem and there's a lot there and we're gonna unpack it together. And before we do, we wanted to give everyone a chance to reflect on it. What your first impression of the poem is. I, um, I'm just gonna pull up here uh, a little a website, if folks don't mind. We're at, we, wanted to, we wanted to ask folks to log on to menti.com, type in this code, and then write down the word that you think best summarizes mothers. And it's okay if you don't get it or you don't feel like you get all the way, but just a word that best expresses what you took away from that. Maybe there was a word. Oh, sorry. Do you mean a word in the poem, Ross? Uh, it could be a word in the poem or a word that you feel like best explains the poem. And then we're going to, we're gonna reflect on that together. Just so that everyone's understood, guys, you can go to menti.com. Um, and I've just put the code for everyone on the chat as well. Um, just put that and you'll see the questions. And I mean, you can, you can comment out there. And then hopefully Ross will share um, all the beautiful answers that you, that you will be putting up. Everybody can take a minute or two how long should they take russ yeah take a minute um we'll, we'll loop back in a minute after folks have a, a chance to enter and pause and think and oh good we can see some of the words coming in i won't give it away i'll wait another 30 seconds <laughs> Okay, has everyone had a chance to enter a word or less? 15 more seconds, we'll get 15 more seconds. <laughs> All right, let's see what folks said. Oh, wonderful. They're still coming in, okay, beautiful. You know what, Ross, you might have to do this part because I can't see the words. Oh, yeah, yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> this, we wanted to do this as an exercise to, to recognize and validate our first readings of things. When we look at something, whether it's something on a page or something on a screen or, or anything we see in the world, we have a first impression and then we'll have other impressions that follow. And we wanted to collect them all on the screen so we could look at it. We see it. generational, serious, elegant, heartwarming, caring, safe. And then there's a few themes or a few words that are emerging that more folks began to recognize. It doesn't mean that they're more accurate than the others, but it's, uh, it's worth us noting 
that several of us in the group noticed these words and thought them they were the best words to summarize mothers. So if folks are comfortable, we'd love to hear your thoughts. So we can look at the three biggest words I see, reflective, home, and loving. Um, and maybe we can start with the word reflective. Um, anybody who, who put in the word reflective, do you feel comfortable sharing? Why did you choose the word reflective? I think I wrote reflective because he's talking about an incident which took place when he was a boy because now he has a son and he's reflecting back on it because obviously it made an impression on him for the fact that he taught his son the same thing and then he went back having his son tell it to his mother. So he wanted to say, probably convey something showing her that it mattered to him. Beautiful. I, I love, I just have to say, I, because I can't read all the small words on the page, I will um, take up the role of enjoying comments so much. I, that, that observation is so powerful because it takes us into the way a poem um, can explore those kinds of understanding we have over time. Um, that our understanding of our relationships might not even um, be very complete in the moment, um, but may need long passages of time and reflection. Uh, and, and by the end of this hour, we will um, we'll have talked a lot about this. And I will also send you all home with another poem of reflection. Um, I, I'll send you home with a TV episode you can watch that is about, re again, thinking about relationship with parents as reflection. Back to you, Ross. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, and I, um, and I was noticing there, it looked like there were other, there's some, that word reflective was also connected to some of these smaller words that are appearing. There's uh, memory. Right. There's an element of thoughtfulness and looking back, thinking about one's past. Um, and maybe there's an element of nostalgia, looking uh, in a nostalgic way at one's own uh, past, uh, longing. So there's a lot of same, very similar ideas floating around. And uh, for, for however the group decided to think about it collectively, reflective was one of the, the, the big summit of words. Let's go to the word loving. Um, who, who shared loving? And if does anybody want to Share with the group why why loving why why did you choose loving for the poem mothers? Ritika, go ahead. Well, I shared the word lovely because I feel that a particular poem that the mother taught his son that's being transferred to that woman's grandchild and his son taught his son the way. Um, a particular memory is being carried on, maybe that his son will teach his kids in the future. This process is really very lovely and caring that uh, because that this has took place with me, like uh, my grandma taught my mother a particular poem, a particular song, which my mother taught me and I love that song so much that maybe in the future I'm gonna taught it, uh, teach it to the future generation, maybe my kids or someone else. Yeah, and, go ahead, Ross. Oh yeah, and that loving is, is captured by a lot of other voices too around. Uh, I'll, I'll highlight some of the ones if it's harder for folks to see. We have family, we have love, lovely, affection, nurturing, emphasizing this, this generational uh, extension of, of love, um, which you said so nicely. And the last, the last and the, the biggest word that I, that the word cloud then communicates was the most selected was the word home. Do we, um, can we have, a, oh yeah. I chose home because I think we are the most real and raw form of ourselves in our home. 
and it's not just a place it's 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 it can also be my cheeks where i find comfort and it's really many more things and like uh, kritika said that her grandmother had shared some poem with her mother and all uh, there used to be some uh, there used to be times when my grandmother used to you know like sing lullabies for me and make me sleep but these days because of some issues uh, i'm the one who who sings her to sleep and it's it's probably a uh, really um like i'm lucky to do that but i just feel how how she might be feeling that is she feeling helpless or anything i just don't want to go uh, mm -hmm. away from the topic <laughs> yeah so yeah for some people their home the place their home are traumatic for some it's it's just the only place they they feel like themselves and that that goes with mothers too i guess like mothers so yes. please go ahead I'm sorry. okay so mothers are our creators right but i've heard stories and real stories where mothers have been toxic to their own children so yeah home can be traumatic home can be loving it's it's just home yeah. and may i say that at by the end of this answer i felt that you were moving toward some of what's difficult in this poem, the, some of the complexities that um, we might in a first reading um, not see, and in a, in a second we might see the, you'll, you'll, if you all look at the back at the poem, as we will in a moment, the, the poem begins with an adult child going home and exchanging both pleasantries and unpleasantries <laughs> with a mother and reading separate books. Um, and there is a huge conversation we can all have about whether that is a comfortable experience, that's, that's an experience of safety, reading separate books, or an experience of some tension and awkwardness. Um, many of us um, probably have experiences in our own homes that have both of those features, um, and the and where where love has, um, I guess, another word we saw in the word cloud was longing or wistfulness, where where there's something maybe a little off, a little incomplete a little something we're trying to recapture. I'm jumping ahead as a reader, um, mostly having listened to all of you. <laughs> and what we're beginning to develop here is the interpretive community um, that, um, it, that helps each other uh, to see more about a poem. And that is one of my favorite ways to read a poem, not alone, but with Ross and now with this, uh, this group of friends that we are of, um, of reading friends that we are, we are becoming. Ross, I think we are, um, we want to share some other approaches. We, we love the first approach to, um, to a poem. And we believe that the observations you make first are going to um, provide a framework that may be complicated and that is that may grow more subtle as you continue to read, but those initial impressions are worth, um, are absolutely worth trusting. So Ross, should we talk about um, some of our other approaches? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, you know, when I, when I look at a poem like this, I, I mean, all of the reflections I think were, were rich and like Lisa was saying that some of them were also, for, they felt like first impressions, but some of them even felt like second and third impressions that the, the subtlety of the reading that uh, folks were, were bringing to us. Um, a lot of times when I've been in class and folks want to talk about poems, a lot of times people want to jump into an explanation. 
Uh, well, folks want to jump in and say, this is what the poem is about, or this is what they're saying. Um, and that's, and there's, there's just an, there's a, there's a naturalness to that for people. People want to explain what they see. I find with poems in particular, it can be hard to do that because they're so layered. There's so many little things going on. And it might be hard, you know, we, we asked you to summarize this poem in one word, but it's a hard, it's a hard ask. There's a lot of things going on in this poem. Um, so what I, what I often like to do, and I think what we like to do at Poetry in America is, is to just observe as much as we can about what's on this page, is to look at it and to ask questions about it. And before we can explain the poem, we have to know what questions there are to explain. And then once we can explain those little elements, then we can start telling a very layered story about what the poem is all about. So for instance, I think when I look at this, one of my first observations is, why is this poem called Mothers? I, I see one mother, at least one obvious mother, is this poet talking about other mothers other than the mother that has long hair and that also teaches a poem to their child? That's a question. I don't, you know, it's not, I don't know the answer at this moment. Another one that's that's very striking for me is as we as we heard everyone, as we heard the reading of it, it was not easy to read, right? I just I had to observe it because it's confusing. When we read, we usually see a sentence with a period at the end, some commas, and there's none of that, or there's very little of that. And so I, I have to ask, why are there no periods here? Um, why are there no commas to help us know where to pause and where to take a breath? So those are questions. Um, and I think that's one of the important stages of, um, of reading is asking and generating questions. And I'll say too, one, one of the other things that catches my eye, and this is another uh, a veil that we use when reading poems, is to, is to notice the structure of a poem. And what does it look like on the page? So we take observations and we look specifically at how it looks. So this is another poem. We're not going to read it together, but I put it here because it looks like how I would assume a poem would look. It's fairly symmetrical, right? There's, an, there's five lines per little stanza per paragraph that we're seeing. It has a, a clear form. And the poem that we're looking at, well, there's, there's nothing clear that I can identify in it. Um, and so it's important when reading is to start asking questions, not just about a word or commas, punctuation, but also just how it looks. And then as readers, one of the things that we can do is start asking them, well, why is that so? What is the poet telling us by not having a block or a period or a capital letter or adding an extra S to the title. And then we can start having a richer and richer reading uh, of this already rich, of this rich poem. And Lisa, what, I yeah. noticed, I mean, you're, you're so right, Ross, to point out the way the poem has a kind of jagged, maybe informal look. Is that so? Is that the right word I'm asking myself? Is it that this poem is informal? Is that, is that why there's no punctuation? Is that why there's no capitalization? Is it, is it saying I'm private? This is my private conversation to myself so I don't need that formality? Or is it saying this is just rushing out of me? <laughs> What is it? So those those questions you're asking about structure, which I mean, structure itself, the word is sounds so boring, but <laughs> it's not. It's in fact uh, a structure of a poem is a set of directions that um, are part of that layering that that you are talking about. And I notice if you go down to the bottom of the poem that we, um, when the mother reads the poem, uh, I see the moon, the moon sees me, God bless the moon and God bless me. 
there's a structural change, right? The, <laughs> the, we, we get one of those little blocks that set and, and we see, oh yeah, there's this poem. There's a poem inside the poem. Huh, what am I gonna do about, about that? So we, we, make, we make general observations and this is the kind of thing we'll do with you. And we make observations about structure and form. Is the poem really wide? Is the poem really narrow? Is the poem written in two line couplets? Another thing we do um, and that, that I find really interesting, although it sometimes makes me anxious when I read poems, is I say, where and when, right? Where does this poem sit in, in the world, in ge it, geographically? In, and where does it sit in history, right? Can I learn, is, is there something in this poem that's saying to me, um, I'm, I'm telling a story of a particular place and time. And this poem, you know, it, it refers to living on it on a play in a place called Burns Avenue. Where's that? Where's Burns Avenue? Um, it also, I notice, and, and this is something I do very deliberately. And we've learned we at in poetry in America, we, we, we do this very deliberately. We say, okay, we've looked at how the, the poem looks on the page. We've looked at the structure. Let's ask some where and when questions. Sometimes some poems, they don't tell you where they're set. They don't tell you, they say, they seem, they give you no clues. So they seem to apply everywhere at all times. But this one also says that, the, that, that the poem speaker is li living in a three room apartment and that, and that it's the kind of apartment where that landlords rent to people with children and the landlords put in windows um, with lots of panes. I don't know if that's, it, 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 that's pretty interesting that we're getting a kind of architectural feature of particular kinds of apartment buildings. Is it that the landlords put the, those kinds of windows in because people have lots of children? Or is the, is the speaker correct about that? I don't really know. But, but, but the where and the when of this poem is starting to interest me. And I'm wondering, is this telling a story about particular kinds of people? Are they rich people? Are they poor people? Are they happy people? Are they sad people? And I'm asking questions about, ooh, what's the Samson myth? I see in a question, <laughs> in a question. Yes, the poem is also making allusions. I think I'm not gonna, I, I'll, I'll say one more word. Uh, I'll say one more word here. Um, uh, and uh, we'll, we will save the Samson myth to discussion. Um, I finally, when we read poems, Ross and me, and the kind of reading we will do with you, we play, we pay a lot of attention to to language that it feels patterned, particularly striking in some way. Maybe it's visually striking. Maybe it's tonally striking, like pleas exchanging pleasantries and unpleasantries sounds to me a little cynical or harsh. And I notice when I listen to that, a tone that sounds a little harsh. Um, and pleasantries, unpleasantries, that kind of matches in my mind with a, a maybe, I see later in the poem, the poem later says, maybe I was awake because I've been a night person or maybe because I wet the bed. <laughs> pleasantries, which is it? Pleasantries or unpleasantries? Don't you know if you were, <laughs> if you're a night person or if you wet the bed? So, so I'm, I'm noticing patterns within the poem. And so these these lenses that Ross and I have been applying as we're asking questions are the kinds of lenses that we think it's gonna be really useful for you 
um, and many students over the years have found them useful with us to, to apply to poems. So now I think we're gonna hear the poem again. <laughs> Is that right, Ross? Yeah, let's listen to it. Um... And we have, and now we have an extraordinary um, actress, Alfre Woodard, reading the poem and reading it, um, uh, reading it, and interpreting it with her voice. I, I should, I'm, before you play this, Ross, I just want to say when I asked Alfre Woodard to do this with me. Um, I was, she's a very famous actress. I was very honored. And she asked me for my phone number and she called me and she said, and she left this message on my machine. She said, I've been practicing reading this poem. Let me know what you think. And she left the reading on my phone. I kept it for so long. Um, anyway, here's Alfre Woodard reading Mothers. And this is Nikki Giovanni, Mothers. The last time I was home to see my mother, we kissed, exchanged pleasantries and unpleasantries, pulled a warm, comforting silence around us and read separate books. I remember the first time I consciously saw her. We were living in a three-room apartment on Burns Avenue. Mommy always sat in the dark. I don't know how I know that. I don't know how I knew that, but she did. That night, I stumbled into the kitchen, maybe because I've always been a night person, or perhaps because I had wet the bed. She was sitting on a chair. The room was bathed in moonlight, diffused through those thousands of panes landlords who rented to people with children were prone to put in windows. She may have been smoking, but maybe not. Her hair was three quarters her height, which made me a strong believer in the Samson myth and very black. I'm sure I just hung there by the door. I remember thinking, what a beautiful lady. She was deliberately waiting, perhaps for my father to come home from his night job, or maybe for a dream, or maybe for a dream that had promised to come by. Come here, she said. I'll teach you a poem. I see the moon, the moon sees me. God bless the moon and God bless me. I taught it to my son who recited it for her. Just to say, we must learn to bear the pleasures as well. Just to say, we must learn to bear the pleasures as we have borne the pains. Whew. <laughs> so I bet it changed. I bet this poem might have changed for you all subtly in new ways, or maybe it just moved a little. And, you know, I love to think about poems as. Um, as things that move a little bit like, you know, a mobile where some, where, where an object suspended from a mobile by a little string will turn. And at once in one moment, you see one thing and in another moment, you see another thing and it has that aliveness. What do we do now, Ross? So we wanted to open it up to hear a few uh, student voices about it. if you had made any observations that you want to share or that you noticed hearing this now a second time, we would love to love to hear your thoughts. Neha, you can go ahead. Yeah, so um, actually, I think it's called mothers plural because the uh, like the poet, she is also a woman. So she, while she's talking about her relationship with her mother, and then it, um, you know, it evolves into her relationship with her own son. So there are two mothers in this context. And then it's about like, 
how her relationship with her son is you know we can kind of see that it's much better and not much better but like in in sorry we lost you there towards the end neha okay we're going to come back to you we'll we'll take more comments uh krisha go for it so i actually made like a short list of observations that i found that were like she's an unpleasant she's like you never know what you're going to get because they were living in kind of a turbulent time so even their relationship was kind of turbulent but then uh, because her mother did go through all those um you know uh she did she did go to trouble some times but now hearing her grandson recite like a nursery rhyme back to her is a uh, like a testament to her making it through that time of her life thank you thank you neha sorry we we you, we lost you there in the middle then you came back but krisha oh, okay. uh, you, were, you were you were finishing something krisha go for it now Yeah. yeah so one thing i noticed was in the second line it's saying my mother and later on it said mommy so i'm trying to like think whether the relationship with her mother or has changed over time was there like an um, a particular experience that made that change or was it just because she grew up and like came to realization with some things that she found out about her mother that might not have really pleased her too much so that was one thing um another thing about the structure i think this is like a free verse poem and probably the structure like how it's so random and not exactly in a formal way is also signifying how up and down their relationship is like the daughter and the mothers so i think this whole thing the whole poem the entire poem is revolving around how her relationship with the mother is or has changed over time maybe because because of this past um experience of flashbacks so this is a few, something that these are such wonderful insightful um empathetic comments i mean i think po poetry I, i feel comforted by this poem because it reminds me that loving relationships hurt <laughs> and are confusing and i i hear the in in what you all are saying a kind of recognition um of that that is in, in part coming from from the poem Uh, can we take a few more comments uh, sure, please uh, uh, awesome okay um you get that yeah hi so i think it says mothers because it displays the intuitive quality especially when she's already sitting there waiting for some reason so somehow it's intuitive of her to know he would come out and she could say something to him also because the thing is in the first paragraph i feel it shows tough love that while it's pleasant to come and see his or her mother it gradually goes on to unpleasantries which is what i think the concept of tough love is you you do love the person but you also give them the harsh facts of life which is what's happening here and i think separate books is while they have their own individual opinions which may be entirely different there's a warm comfort in knowing that they accept each other for what they feel would anyone like and i know a bunch of you have comments i'm just wondering about the kind of portrait of the mother she's a pretty formidable figure <laughs> and we we don't except for the except for the poem we don't really hear anything from her but we get a lot of visual cues about her just wondering if anyone had a thought any of you who have hands raised have thought on on that if not that's fine that's mine i'll i'll keep working that in my mind sarnika you want to go ahead with a comment 
Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I'd like to answer your question first where, uh, about the portrait of the mother. Uh, in the third stanza, it says that mommy always sat in the dark. I think that dark signifies the struggle. And I think the poet is using mommy because people usually call their mothers mommy when they're young. So maybe the poet saw their mother struggling but couldn't really grasp the entire concept. So that's what I think. And I had uh, another thing to say about the structure. I think there is no punctuation in the structure because the poet is uh, maybe reminiscing and thinking about their relationship. And when thinking our inner voice doesn't really run out of breath and it doesn't really pause and punctuate. So, and I think it also signifies, it's also like a mirror of the relationship between the mother and the poet. Somebody did say that. Sorry, I repeated that. So that's... Thank you. Thank you so much. One thing I would like to highlight is that, of course, the poem for me changed completely as soon as I, um, you know, saw that statement of uh, perhaps because I had wet the bed uh, that you know, in, in, intrinsically sort of tells you that the child, I mean, it's almost like a child, uh, you know, writing this, uh, you know, probably four, not even four or five years old, because if they're still wetting the bed. So uh, that completely changes the dynamic of the poem and the mommy and, and everything that sort of comes um, after. But would, would love to take, we've got some more comments, we'll move. But I love Rishi, I love that, I, you know, Asking the question, another is, where does this poem change? Where does it break open? And sometimes it breaks open in various places, but I, I, I think that there's a whole interpretation of this poem and this relationship that comes from saying everything, you know, something big happens there. Thank you so much. Over to Smai, Vijay. Yeah, so as you said about the, there's this breaking point where the poem transitions from one phase to another that depicts a totally new dynamic to the whole poem. So I think that part we can call it the wota, um, normally used oh. in the poems. So I think that part, I, at least from my own perspective, I think that was when they said, you know, um, that night I stumbled into the kitchen because that's an that's describing an incident where something new is happening and it's describing a certain way and how transcribing it, how it exactly happened and how it exactly appears into his own perspective or memory. So I think that was a very important part of the poem. Thank you. Thank you, Smai. Um, you're, uh, I'm, I'm so impressed by, by all of your comments, guys. It, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we'll take our last stunning hand here, uh, Ojaswi and then we'll open it up again to Ross and Lisa. Okay, so I think uh, that I just took uh, reading it creatively too seriously. I don't know, but I feel that it's not actually about her mother. I mean, it's about, it. it's the feeling she get. Uh, it's the feeling we get when we think about our mothers or when we, I mean, poets like to ex expose their expressions as dic discreetly as possible, right? Because, yeah, it's, I mean, and uh, when she says that mommy always sat in the dark, I don't know how I knew, but she did. Maybe this person is talking to their own little self or some older self. I just don't know. I, I think I don't, I, I think I understood the poem, but I think I did not. I'm sorry. That's, that's totally fine. Just, and we'll take Delisha's comment as well. But this is what I love about poetry, right? There are no right answers. There are no wrong answers. We love to just keep talking about it, keep chatting about it, and, and something beautiful comes up. We'll take last comment and, and then open up to a more um, you know, open Q&A. Um, Delisha? Hi, I actually wanted to... I did raise my hand earlier, but someone placed an opinion. So I, I just... <laughs> this lowered my hand i actually just noticed something uh i actually texted out the word longing earlier and i feel like the poet wants the comfort the that comfort that she used to have as a child and but like when we actually think of the deeper meaning i think the comfort is also being reflected on the mother the, uh, the comfort that she wants but she can't get because uh, she is struggling and everything I feel like that's being highlighted here. So I just noticed it. 
the comfort that mother wants here is probably just wants to break from the barriers and everything and as for the daughter she wants a comfort of the mother's love that she used to have as a child yeah that's it Very nice. These are such beautiful <laughs> interpretations of this poem, and I, 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 I just want to say um, I, I will continue thinking about the speaker herself and that very creative I, that that reading of the poem uh, was such a deep one that gave us this. This is about me. This is about how I I see myself. I see myself as a person who, who bounces between pleasantries and unpleasantries, who, you know, wet the, there's some shame, there's some discomfort, there's some trust in poetry, in the mother's voice, some distance from the mother, all of those, and the largeness of the mother, who, who's, a, who's a figure with her hair is half her size. I think she has a great big Afro. I think it's not, I don't know if, I don't know if her hair's long or it's high, um, but there's the, the, and our mothers are that way for us. They're so large, um, right? They have, and especially the mothers of our, of, our, of our childhood. I hope you all, I think we could talk about this poem for at least another hour, but I hope you all have enjoyed it. Um, I'm, I'm really glad we, we picked it. Um, it, 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 it is, um, it's one of those poems that ex exercises our observational skills, our critical skills, our intellects, but that really, really speaks to our, our hearts. And I will just say here, uh, before we get to kind of final, more general Q&A, that we are sending you away with a poem called Those Winter Sundays by the poet Robert Hayden. Uh, this is a television episode. It has uh, the current US president in it, Joe Biden, uh, as, as well as others. And I think you'll see that it's a poem that also reflects on relationships that are um, loving, but not easy. Uh, and it's a uh, it's it's a, a beautiful one too. So we'd like to open things up to um, to questions and thoughts about the um, about the summer intensive. If uh, if you all have some questions, sure, um, Ross. If you want to sort of uh, uh, sh shut down the the screen share, um, and then we can. Uh, just have some questions, guys. Uh, I see a few hands still. Um, I'm gonna make sure that we're all in uh, gallery view and perfect. Awesome. So hopefully everyone can see each other. Um, thank you once again. Over to Neha. Okay, yeah. So um, I just wanted to ask about uh, like how diverse is the poetry that you're going to be studying or that we are going to be studying in the uh, intensive because I feel like every culture and its literature has a completely different takeaway and a completely different like kind of a flavor to it and I, I'm, I'm wondering like how much of it is just more uh, based on just like um, the western um, I don't know outlook on poetry or are you guys going to be introducing uh, translations or anything like that Great question, Neha. Great question, Ross. Yeah, it's a it's a wonderful question. Um, we we really value bringing all kinds of voices in English uh, to our learning. Uh, this particular summer program is going to be focused on a lot of uh, voices in America, um, American voices, but from lots of different cultural contexts. Um, okay. And yeah, that will be the that'll be the primary frame uh, of the course. But one of the um, one of the topics that we're going to be looking at is immigration. So we'll be hearing a lot of narratives of people who are in transition and reflecting on that 
uh, process from being between cultures and then also being between places as well. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Great. Thank you. Um, anyone else had a question? Um, of course, this program is gonna start, um, of course, today you've got a small flavor for it, but uh, the program is gonna take place in the month of July. Um, we've already got 25 brilliant kids from around the country um, who are going to be joining the program. Um, I really hope that you're able to take a lot out of it. Um, it's a $200 program, which also confers you, um, as we're putting out on, on the chat, with uh, one college credit that you can sort of transfer to any U.S. college that you go to later on, uh, which is going to really help. So um, once again, um, I, I would really say, and please visit our website, uh, thebigregroup.com. You can go to Poetry in America. Uh, com as well. See a, a lot more uh, content that is out there. It'll really give you a, a good flavor of what's about to come in the course. And of course, um, we have Ross and, and Lisa is going to be leading uh, most of the sessions uh, during the program. So I really hope that um, you're able to take this incredible opportunity. Uh, I mean, I think I can be lost in these poems, uh, you know, for, for long hours. I think it always surprises me when we lead read literature even, how even one line, one word, which I saw so much um, from some of the small poems, right? Uh, Lisa, when we've interviewed so many people, um, just that one line or that couple of words can take hours to discuss. Uh, but one thing that I would like to highlight uh, through the course would be definitely that you're not only going to be reading, but there is a lot of emphasis throughout the week that is going to be given on your writing skills as well. Uh, which is a very important part. So, um, and, and, and something as a capstone sort of poem that you're going to take away with you uh, through this Poetry in America intensive program in July. Um, so I, I really hope you're able to take advantage of it. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Um, you already know uh, the Big Red Group. Um, feel free to call us and uh, we'll be giving you more information on it. But detailed curriculum is um, sort of present in our brochures. Um, on the website. So please go have a look. And if you have any questions, just feel free to uh, shoot out an email to us. Um, over to Ajaswi. I just had a little uh, query that will our writings be recited in the, in the meetings and will it be reviewed by everyone? And, uh, and is That's there it. any scholarship or anything we can apply for? If Sure. So I, I'll, I'll take the scholarship question, uh, Ojasvi, for all of our Big Red Group program. Of course, the program fee is $200, which uh, hopefully, you know, there, there's very less scope of scholarship that way. But please do apply for the program. If there is a need uh, in all of our programs, we're more than happy to offer scholarships uh, to students. So uh, please do apply and, and we'll see what, what we will be able to do. Yeah. Uh, but to, for the first part of your question, over to Ross. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, writing, as you probably know, is very personal at times. So some of the writing will be something that you can uh, keep close to your heart without you don't have to share. And some of it will be you'll be invited to share with the group. We'll do a lot of learning in small group settings, too. So it doesn't have to be in front of a large, uh, a large audience, but maybe in front of a few. Um, so there'll be different opportunities to share. And you can also always choose what you feel most comfortable to share. Yes, yes, we um, we love to foster a, a sense of larger of larger community and also, you know, and, and our technology gives us the opportunity to break into smaller groups, get to know, um, get uh, get to know others well, develop creative co partnerships with um, with others. Awesome. Well, on, on that note, uh, once again, guys, thank you so much for taking the time out to, to our mentors as well. Uh, thank you, Ross and Lisa, for, for taking the time out of your busy schedules and, and spending this time with us. Um, to all the students out there, again, uh, for the love of poetry, literature, everything, I, I, I think there is Sorry. something. I know, sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> There's something out there for you guys. So hopefully, um, you know, have a, have a great summer ahead, um, have a great week ahead, and uh, we're going to close the rooms now, but again, if you have any questions, 
please reach out to us, um, email us, and, and we'll be happy to get back to you. Um, any final notes from Lisa or Ross? I just want to say um, how much I enjoyed this hour and how impressed I was with the depth of the, of the questions and the eloquence of all of the, of all of the speakers. Really, really impressed and excited. Um, I know together. Ross was. I know Ross was worried or you know wanted to inquire. So I, I did. I, I'm 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 glad that Ross got to speak to all the students as well, and we'll get to know uh, you know uh, how what kind of students are really going to be there part of the yeah. poetry program with you, Ross. It's Streaming. really it's it's really a wonderful chance to learn with all of you um, and hear your thoughts, just like Lisa said. And we're excited to keep learning for those uh, who want to keep learning. We uh, we really we really love the the chance to do this with you today. Yeah, we really did. Awesome. Thank you. Well, well, I'm going to be thinking about, I'm actually visiting my mother this morning, and I'm going to be uh, thinking about this poem and my mother, since the poem seems to have us think, all think about our mothers. Well, on that thank note, you guys, thank you so much once again for joining in. Um, we'll be closing the meeting room now. Um, have a great evening and a great week ahead. See you all. Bye. Bye, bye. bye, everyone. You guys. Bye. bye. Have a good day for this session. Thank you, Smiley. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.